ambassador sent to us to implore don't you be eating octopus hey cause what have they ever done to us I mean they're clever oh so clever yeah and they've never no they've never done anything to you 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 and you Well, you know this is okay, but it really means let's connect with our suckers, that's it. You can do that whenever you like, it just means love. It means we're connecting. That's good. Lovely. Shake a leg now. Shake a leg. Shake a leg, 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 leg. Shake a leg, 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 leg. Octopus, also known, also known as Michael Turner Lee. Up until today, I've had my wife pushing me well. That sounds wrong. My wife been pushing me in the wheelchair, not just the, no. Let's be honest with ourselves. Anyway, she's not here tonight, so it can be a bit loose with what I say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Amley Steampunk Weekend 2022, where we bring you some beautiful, beautiful sunshine, and hopefully, and soon a slight breeze and maybe a couple of degrees lower temperature as the evening goes on, and we can all enjoy just a lovely summer's evening how often in this country do you get out to sit out on an evening like this and just enjoy the music in the sunshine and be fairly confident it's not going to chuck down with rain halfway through the evening and we've got a fantastic lineup of entertainment for you tonight oh, you that's wonderful we've got a fantastic lineup of entertainment for you tonight we've got everyone from rap scallions and a dark design everyone from rock vixen to the Wattingers, but first, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Welcome to the Amelie oh, yeah, Steampunk yeah. stage, Captain Caleb and the Rocket Dog! Watch 
eBay, two things you need to know about eBay. The first thing you need to know about eBay, everything on it really cheap. Second thing you need to know about eBay, the reason everything on it is really cheap, 70% of it is absolute rubbish. I started buying so much stuff I didn't even know what I'd bought and then one day I was sitting at home, obviously, when suddenly the postman came and he brought me a parcel through the door and I'll open the parcel and inside the parcel, oh, I'm going to stand up so you can see it at the back. There we go. Inside the parcel was this. And I thought to myself, Greg, what on earth have you bought yourself now? You got yourself a bunch of pom-poms stuck on a stick. Well, I'll be honest, I kind of wanted to know what it was I bought myself. So I went back onto eBay. And the great thing about eBay is when you scroll down through your, your old stuff, there are photographs of everything you bought. So I scrolled down through my purchase history until I found a photograph of this. And it, so it was a title to tell me what this is. And it told me that this is, believe it or not, 
a pom pom stick. <laughs> I'm like, that makes sense. Pom poms on a stick is pom pom stick, but I kind of wanted to know what a pom pom stick is. So I went back on and under the title there's a description, and the description said, by now you're probably wondering what a pom pom stick is. I thought, yeah, I am wondering what a pom pom stick is. It said a pom pom stick is a stick. With pom-poms on. I thought, yes, we know it's a stick with pom-poms. We can see it's a stick with pom-poms. It said, you notice your stick has four pom-poms. I said, one pom-pom, two pom-pom, three pom-pom, four pom-pom. It said, you notice your stick has a red pom-pom, a white pom-pom, a yellow pom-pom, and a blue pom-pom. I said, yes, it does have a red pom-pom, a white pom-pom, a yellow pom-pom, and a blue pom-pom. It said, what a lot of people don't realise is the red pom-pom is not actually connected to the stick. The red pom-pom is connected to a piece of string that's connected to the stick. I said, yes, I had realised the red pom-pom is connected to a piece of string that's connected to the stick. Except it's not. The red pom-pom is not connected to a piece of string that's connected to the stick. The red pom-pom is connected to a piece of string that's connected to the white pom-pom. I thought that makes sense. The red pom-pom is connected to a piece of string that's connected to the white pom-pom. But then it got more confusing. Because then it said, what a lot of people don't realise, not only is the red pom-pom connected to the white pom-pom by that piece of string, but the red pom-pom is connected to the yellow pom-pom by the same piece of string. I thought, hang on a minute. You're telling me the red pom-pom is connected to the yellow pom-pom by that piece of string. I thought the red pom-pom was connected to the white pom-pom by that piece of string. Now you're telling me the red pom-pom is connected to the yellow pom-pom by that piece of string. I thought the yellow pom-pom was going to be connected to the blue pom-pom by that piece of string. But it turns out the yellow pom-pom is not connected to the blue pom-pom by that piece of string. The yellow pom-pom was connected to the red pom-pom by that piece of string. Well, I thought to myself, hang on a minute. If you think about it, if the red pom-pom is connected to the white pom-pom by that piece of string, and the red pom-pom is connected to the yellow pom-pom by that piece of string, then the yellow pom-pom must be connected to the white pom-pom by the same piece of string that's connected to the red pom-pom. But I thought, wait a minute. What about the blue pom-pom? <coughs> well, if you think about it, if the red pom-pom is connected to the white pom-pom by that piece of string, and the red pom-pom is connected to the yellow pom-pom by that piece of string, then the red pom-pom is at the centre of this little conundrum. Therefore, we can only conclude that the blue pom-pom must be connected to the red pom-pom by the same piece of string. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of confused faces here. <laughs> I'm going to recap, make sure everyone knows what's going on. Let's go do this one more time. So the red pom-pom is going to the blue pom-pom, but don't forget the red pom-pom is also going to the white pom-pom. Now the white pom-pom is going to the yellow pom-pom, yellow pom-pom is also going to the blue pom-pom. Now the blue pom-pom is going to the red pom-pom. Don't forget the red pom-pom is also going to the yellow pom-pom, the yellow pom-pom is also going to the white pom-pom, the white pom-pom is going to the blue pom-pom, which connects the yellow pom-pom, which connects the white pom-pom. And the big question is, how can that possibly be true if none of the pom-poms are connected? Woo! And ladies and gentlemen, that is when I got so confused when I went home. And ladies and gentlemen, this is when I'm incredibly hopeful I can turn to the stage. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the fantastic Rob Scallion! Hello. <laughs> Got some rock for you. We are coming in pretty hot. It's going to be less chat from me, uh, apart from this bit where I seem to be chatting and not play music. Let's play some music. Hang on. Let's play some music now. <laughs> Oh. 
Because Woo! you were Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now in just a few minutes' time, we would, we, as you can see, we're just wheeling Uncle Ezekiel onto the stage now. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a few minutes' time, we will have the fantastic Wattingers. I'll be completely honest with you, it got a bit dark during that last bit, so I don't actually have anything I can perform in the dark, which means 
I am desperately filling time, but luckily these guys are professionals. They know what they're doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, in just a few minutes' time, if, by the way, you are sat in a position where you can't really uh, see the stage, and I do recommend shuffling yourself round because this is an audio-visual feast, ladies and gentlemen. There are uh, uh, videos and projections going on in the background, and they are all worth watching. They are absolutely incredible. So I recommend that while these guys are taking a moment or two to set up, if you can't see the stage clearly, then uh, find yourself a nice seat where you can get a much, much clearer view of the stage and then everything will be ready for you in just a few minutes time when the show begins. Yes. Recite the periodic table. Recite the periodic table. Right, we've got um, uh, helium, lithium, titanium, boron. What, what do you call me? <laughs> Plutonium. I don't know what a period right, table. I could have done something else. I don't know what I could have done. Ladies and gentlemen, it is nearly time. We are here at the Armley Steampunk Weekend. We have seen some incredible acts tonight. We have seen Bear North started off the evening for us. That was followed by Captain Caleb and the Rocket Dogs. We've had Rapscallion on already. We've had the Dark Design. And we have had Rock Vixen. Oh yes, Rock Dixon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, obviously every good show builds to a pinnacle. It builds to an incredible peak. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we have been doing throughout this evening. We have been building to a peak of entertainment. Because now, ish. <laughs> now, ish, it gives me great pleasure to take you to a dark place down in the deep south. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to meet the Wattingers. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, in just a few moments' time, when we're feeling quite ready, <laughs> deep south of the Isle of Wight, lad. Let's not start making comments about the Isle of Wight. Be careful. I know you're coming to visit next week, Sheriff. And, uh, yeah, the locals can get a little bit rowdy when we get foreigners coming over to the Isle of Wight. You got your passport, haven't you? Don't forget your passport, whatever you do. Ladies and gentlemen, oh! Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, speaking of a little bit of history, uh, you know, it's the sign on the screen there just said Blu-ray disc. I don't know, a little bit of metal we used to use to play uh, play videos. Oh, it still says Blu-ray disc. I don't think that's part of the projection. I don't even know what's going on now. I'll be completely honest with you. <laughs> Tell you about the penguins! Have I not talked about the penguins yet? Oh, this is a fascinating story. So, uh, a few years ago, I actually travelled up to the, uh, and which one's at the top? Arctic? Antarctic? No, I probably travelled down to the Antarctic, because I don't think there are any penguins in the Arctic. I travelled down to the Antarctic because I had actually been sent on a mission to uh, rescue the penguins of the Antarctic, who at that point in time were being threatened by the uh, large mechanical whale that had been built by the evil genius known as uh, Sheriff Ants. Sheriff Ants had decided to build a large <laughs> mechanical whale, which was swimming around under the ice flows of the Antarctic. I think there are ice flows in the Antarctic, we'll stick with that. Underneath the ice flows of the Antarctic, there was this large mechanical whale piloted by Sheriff Hans. And as he was on the lookout for penguins, and some of you might be wondering why Sheriff Hans would be wanting to pick up a penguin. <laughs> no, 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 you can't. Oh, if you didn't get it quick enough. Now, Sheriff Hans, he was actually after penguins because he had uh, suddenly discovered that if you melt down penguins, they provide a much cheaper source of fuel for your car than uh, the diesel and petrol True. currently available. True. But let's be honest with ourselves, probably tapping the power of the sun would be cheaper than diesel is at the moment. Yes. So, Sheriff, that, that wasn't a political point. Sorry, I wasn't trying to make a political... Oh, yes! Yes! He's right! Petrol's too expensive, yeah! Revolution! Anyway, uh, I travelled down to the... That's right, I travelled... Are we nearly ready, guys? I travelled down to the Antarctic uh, to stop the large mechanical whale. And you might be wondering how you stop a large mechanical whale? Uh, well, obviously the way you stop a large mechanical whale is with a larger mechanical shark. So, what I've done was I've carefully <laughs> obtained myself a larger mechanical shark. I hand built the whole thing uh, from scratch. Unfortunately, because I built it myself, uh, it wasn't particularly seaworthy, which means I had to keep it on land at all times. Uh, but luckily, as I was sailing the large mechanical shark across the ice flows of the Antarctic, carefully weaving in and out of the penguins, 
because obviously I didn't want to kill the penguins, as I was trying to save the penguins. As I was riding a large mechanical shark between the penguins, I spotted on the horizon this large mechanical whale. At this point in time, my engineering prowess with the large mechanical shark, I hope this is going to be really soon because I'm building to a bit of a crescendo here, the large mechanical shark suddenly started to judder quite badly. The large, by the way, this story does end up with me in a wheelchair. So the uh, large mechanical shark, people have often wondered how this happened. The large mechanical shark started to judder quite badly. The steam pressure was building up. I didn't know wasn't releasing enough pressure. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, that's exactly the sound it made actually, by the way, that was just the sound effect. That's the sound this machine was making around me. This, all in my ears. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden the mechanical shark exploded, throwing itself pieces all over the Antarctic and separating off a large chunk of ice causing like this massive ice avalanche. And the ice avalanche slid down the ice cliff towards the ice edge. No, no, I don't know what I'm talking about now. Sid, the sea, that's the word. That's the word I couldn't think of, thank you. Yeah, the ice sea, no, ice avalanche slid down the cliff towards the sea where waiting, waiting was Sheriff Ants, Captain Caleb and his rocket dogs all sat there waiting, waiting to see what would happen. And then they decided I was done with the story, so they turned my microphone off, they had enough. <laughs> Luckily, the avalanche landed on Captain K-11 and the Rocket Dogs and Sheriff Ranch. They destroyed the mechanical, uh, mechanical whale. He came swimming up to the surface. I rushed down because I'm a nice chap. I helped him out of the water. I said, are the penguins safe? He said, yes, the penguins are safe. I said, then isn't it about time we got on? And introduce, ladies and gentlemen, your headline act this evening. Please give it up. Woo! Thank you kindly. We're the Wallingers. We're the Wallingers. From the Seven Devil Swamp in Arkansas, about 1800 and something. I can't remember the date because I've never been very good with dates and figures. Uh, so, further all there to my left is my nephew's son. Cletus Kai Babadook Wattinger. Uh, he lives between the pages of uh, children's books and he comes out at night times and scares them in their nighttime dreams. Please, Cletus Kai Babadook Wattinger on the bass, on the bone bass. To my immediate left here is my niece, uh, my daughter, my third wife, Sarah Wattinger. <laughs> Spent a lot of time on the Arizona plains collecting up ghosts and devils Woo! from the haunted west and then bringing them back here to this very evening and I can see them amongst you folk right now. <laughs> this here to my right is my mostly but not all dead ancestor, Ezekiel Obadiah Wattinger, housed within this time traveling device and that's why we can come visit you folk from back where we are in the swampland. So we're going to get straight to it now with a song called Dirty Kisses, which I believe you all probably had some of in your time. You might find them behind the stage. This is very, very hot. Yeah. 
The festival was over, everyone's loading their gear and they're ready to go. It's been an awesome weekend, knackered, but so much fun. There's the stage all packed down. So I've been David Bradley, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, etc, etc, etc. Thank you for watching. Bye.